Hello friends and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In today's Kerbal Space Program video, I was I was actually somewhat torn, conflicted if you will, about what to make this video about. You see, Kerbal Space Program version 1.12 recently came out and included among its sizable list of additions and features was lots of brand new easter eggs scattered across the solar system. So naturally, I have suddenly received a high volume of comments and tweets etc asking me where the new easter eggs are and how to find them. Now I considered making a grand easter egg tour or something like that video in which I go ahead and visit every single new easter egg and show you where they are, but I have decided to do one better and help you improve your skills at the game and show you a feature in the game that you might not have known about. How does that old saying go? Give a man a fish and you'll feed his family for a day, but give the man a fishing rod and he will break it up to make firewood or trade it for a fish. Actually, I'm not sure how that metaphor goes since this doesn't really tally up with what I'm trying to do in this video, but anyway. <coughs> In this Kerbal Space Program video, I will not be showing you where the new easter eggs are, but rather I will show you how to find them and locate them yourselves. And why not do it with an SSTO? I've not made an SSTO in quite a while, and my goodness, the rapier engine plumes look absolutely stunning with the Mortal mod installed, so you get to see that in action again. The craft is a fairly simple setup. Inside that cargo bay, there is a small crewed exploration ship that'll head down to the surface of the Mun, plant a flag on or around an Easter egg, and then return its pilot back to Kerbin, where, meanwhile, the SSTO will also be headed. Obviously, I'm not just going to leave the SSTO stranded in space. The key feature of the crewed vessel is that it has a small probe core inside it, one that has access to Kerbnet. Yes, this is the key to what we're doing. Don't worry, this mission isn't going to just be me showing you how to Google Easter egg coordinates or just how to randomly drive or fly around until you just happen to stumble upon an Easter egg. I'll be showing you how to use Kerbal Space Program's inbuilt feature that lets you find and mark and track Easter eggs from orbit. It's not always the most intuitive interface to use, which is why I think a lot of people just don't use it or even don't know about it. Some of you might be wondering what the point of a feature that specifically tracks Easter eggs is, since, you know, once you know where the Easter eggs are, you don't really need to hunt for them ever again. But there is a key reason. There is one kind of Easter egg in this game that's present on every planet and moon, but it randomly changes in location every single time you start a new game, so you never know where it'll be. And yes, I am referring to the mysterious green monoliths. And from this guide, maybe you can hunt down this most illustrious of Easter eggs for yourself. Maybe I should do a follow-up where I use my own tutorial to find a green monolith. Maybe that's, a, that's an idea for another video. But that's it, there. This guide will show you how to find Easter Easter eggs, and how to find green monoliths, I guess, that spawn in random locations each time a new save game is made. I feel like, uh, on reflection, that was quite a drawn-out introduction to this video's subject, but, you know, th that's just what you're here for. And what are we even doing right now? I, I kind of... We've, we've launched, we've, a, lot, a lot has happened, guys, and I didn't really talk about anything that was going on, because I feel like... I feel like the footage sort of does all the talking for me, right? And you've seen me go to the Mun, and I did mention uh, during that big ex explanation that we're going to be going to the Mun for the purposes of this test. And I decided to use the new lazy method that we have of plotting a course from low carbon orbit to the Mun by using the Auto Maneuver Node Creation app, and it just plotted the Maneuver Node really easily in one go, although it's going to take us a few days to reach that maneuver node. Uh, but with the power of time warp and I guess video editing, we can speed that up to be basically now. So uh, yeah, it's a it's a very long burn. I've only got that one nuclear engine powering this SSTO because I didn't need it to have particularly high thrust to weight ratio since I wasn't planning on actually landing the space plane itself on any celestial body other than, I guess, back at Kerbin. But Kerbin, of course, as you know, has an atmosphere. We can use the wings so the plane lands itself. It doesn't need to land propulsively with the nuclear engine is what I mean. So the thrust weight ratio wasn't particularly relevant. So I decided to shave down our weight, uh, just have the one big heavy nuclear engine. I know we did end up having to use part clipping to achieve the look I wanted, but I hope you'll forgive me. Um, if you don't, then I do apologize. But really the SSTO is just the delivery system for the vehicle that I'm actually going to be trying to showcase in this video once we get to the key part of this mission, which is very rapidly approaching. So I really need to stop tangenting for a second, although you might note that we are in a pretty high orbit around the Mun, and that's because we need to be high enough to get a good scan 
of the MUN surface. So let's go ahead and open up our cargo bay and get the scanning vessel ready. So I'm going to right click the probe core and click curb net access. And as you can see, a map of the MUN has appeared and there are two question marks. I got it first try. This has never actually happened to me before. So that worked out really well. But those question marks are Easter eggs. We've detected them. So we can just get that little reticule over the question mark and set waypoint. And then if we hit M and open up the map screen, um, I, th I really thought the footage was going to do that. There we go. Well, I just crossfade it. Uh, you can see that those waypoints are now set on the map screen and we can see where those Easter eggs are. We haven't got to just continually refresh that map screen. Now, uh, the Easter eggs do not have a 100% chance of appearing on the curb net. It's like, I can't remember what the exact uh, percentage is of getting an Easter egg showing up as a question mark on the curb net. And I think it does vary from probe core to probe core. So if you're not getting any question marks like I remarkably managed to get two <laughs> on the first opening of the app, if you don't get any question marks, just basically time warp around the MUN and just spam that refresh button until a question mark appears. You can hit rep refresh during uh, time warp and that's like not physical time warp, I mean actual time warp. So it's not a very difficult or lengthy process when you get down to brass tacks. And speaking of getting down to brass tacks, we're getting down... Orbit, orbitally speaking, I'm lowering my orbital height. That started off as a clever thing and it just evolved into nonsense talk. I get it. Let's just uh, move along and get to exploring what cool Easter eggs we are we we have. So uh, I'm just going to raise up our little exploration ship, M Meg Trey Kerman. I don't know how you pronounce that name. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Meg Trey Kerman has boarded. We can just get the SSTO clear of the little landing capsule. These two craft are not going to uh, reunite now. The SSTO will just go back to Kerman land itself. And as you can see, there is a heat shield and parachute on this vessel because this can just return to, to Kerman once it's done its lunar excursion. Great speech. Great speech there, I think, overall. <laughs> now, some of you may be wondering why I've selected this particular waypoint out of the two I have, given that one of them is on the equator and is therefore very easy to get to. Uh, the reason is because I knew that the one on the equator was a Mun Arch, which uh, I've been to before. I didn't want to do a Mun Arch again because I've already done Mun Arches before. So I said, let's go to this Easter egg. And it turns out uh, it's, a, it's a Mun Arch. So... Oh, well, the, again, I guess this is kind of because this is the one Easter egg, I guess, maybe the, aside from the monolith that's by the KSC. This is the one Easter egg that everyone knows. This is not a spoilery video. If you want to see the new Easter eggs, um, well, Kerbal Space Program's official Twitter has been showcasing what they look like. But I mean, if you want to find them organically yourself, this video is not a spoiler. We'll be going to the one Easter egg that probably everyone has seen by now. But I'm going to try and make things a little bit interesting and land on the Mun Arch very, very clumsily and uh, plant a flag. And this lander, it's not the most stable. It's pretty tall and top heavy. And those landing legs, they don't have a very wide footprint because I wanted them to fit inside the Mark II cargo bay, which meant I had to clip them inside the fuel tank slightly. So it's not, it's basically the worst possible Mun Arch lander you could possibly use. So in the end, I decided to just have it be flat on, this, on the surface of the Mun Arch and that would keep it steady. And so I just slid it up gently, gently to the top, and it looks like it's stable. So we can go ahead and calmly plant our flag on the Mun Arch. We did it, we did the thing, and at this point I was like, torn between, oh, we do need to plant the flag, but I can see it sliding. So I was just like panicking at this point, like quick, get the flag planted, get the flag planted. Okay, go, 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 and it was fine. There was no need. There was. I was calm. Were you calm? I was calm. I wasn't panicking. I didn't pee my pants during that moment. And we, we can just return to orbit. And the beauty of this being its own return vehicle, we haven't got to worry about getting back to the SSTO. Is I'd have to worry about getting back into any specific orbit or waiting for a more optimal time to launch because I obviously couldn't at that point because the vessel was about to slide off the Mun Arch. Uh, we can just go ahead and get back to Kerbin. So this part of the video, I'm going to play back the footage fairly quickly because, I mean, who hasn't seen a, you know, capsule return from Mun Orbit to Kerbin at this point? Uh, I'm guessing everyone watching this it has because you're watching a Kerbal Space Program video, a tutorial, if you will. I mean, could you describe this as a tutorial? I feel like, I feel like as my, as far as my commentaries go, this is one of the more uh, understandable ones and less just complete mess commentary. Sometimes I, I watch a video back and I'm like, wow, I feel like I spent a good 45 minutes in that video and I managed to just say absolutely nothing of relevance. I feel like I've been a bit more 
on topic. I'll tell you why, guys. It's because the heat wave in England has temporarily uh, subsided. And usually, uh, when when there's a heat wave, my office just gets to absolutely boiling temperatures and I can barely concentrate. I just get really fogged up and it's really hard to concentrate on what I'm doing. And the generally, the sunnier weather means that there's more pollen in the air and I'm allergic to all of the pollens, as I've mentioned in previous commentaries before. So I got the seasonal allergies kicking in. I got the, the heat stroke kicking in and it's just, it's just a mess. It's just not a good time. But today... There was rain, washed away all the pollen. The rain lowered the temperature, and now it's nice and cloudy outside. So it, I'm, at a, I'm actually at a, a more mentally elevate, elevated state, I say, slurring my words apparently just then. My cognitive abilities are at a functional level. Now, what am I doing? I'm trying to analyze what's going on. Oh, yes, I'm doing my Kerbin re-entry. Yes, I was just sort of waffling away just then but yes uh we're going to do a few um low passes or high passes i should say into kerbin's upper atmosphere just to bleed off some speed without overheating and bring our apoapsis down to kind of a low kerbin orbit height so we can more accurately plan a deorbit burn and get ourselves back to the kerbal space center because are we darned if we're not going to land at the uh, the runway itself i did consider landing at one of the new launch sites but i don't think any of them have a runway I mean, there's the desert launch site, there's the island runway, and there's the Kerbal Space Center. And I'm like, well, I have those three, Kerbal Space Center. You know, we launched from there. It's, it's nice to, like, la launch and land from the same spot. We are coming in very inclined, though, hence why I'm trying to point sort of more normally, as in, like, the, the, the vector normal, not as in, like, I'm pointing in a more everyday direction, if that makes sense. Didn't go so well, though. I did end up spinning out of control a few times. I'm just keeping an eye on my apoapsis height. You can see it on the top left. Very, very small, so you'll have to bump that uh, the quality up to 1080p or 1440p. Uh, but now I, now I have now opened up the thing on the bottom left, which is a bit easier to see because it's got higher contrast. And if you play console, that's how you can see the Kerbal Engine readouts that I have on my videos. Uh, people are like, one of the criticisms of my channel, or my content I should say, is that people say, oh, Matt Lown is too reliant on the Kerbal Engineer readouts. He needs to play the game properly. And I'm like, all of the Kerbal Engineer readouts, you can, you can see those in the stock game. I just like having them there so that people watching the video can see, like, what my Delta V is at any given point in the mission without having to, like, wait for me to showcase a certain screen that shows either my delta v gauges or the uh, the apoapsis periapsis height you could just see them at all points in the video and you can see nice things like what biome i'm over what mark speed i'm going at which is a nice thing to see that only shows up when you're flying in the atmosphere so that will appear when we enter the atmosphere and we're entering the atmosphere very quickly i realized i was going to overshoot and i literally could not be bothered to load a prior quick save and fix that. So we're just going to enter super fast, super steep. I honestly really thought I was going to overheat and explode. But not a single temperature gauge appeared. Like, I actually then opened up the cheats menu. Because I was like, do I have uh, no, te no temperature gauge cheat? What's it called? Ignore max temperature? Is that enabled? I don't remember enabling it. And no, it wasn't enabled. And my re-entry heat settings are all normal. So I'm not quite sure how I got away with that one. I mean, I should have just reloaded the quick save and done it properly, but whatever. I really couldn't be bothered. Um, the heat wave was still very much going when I recorded this video. I recorded this video a couple of days ago, and I'm now sitting down and recording the commentary, and I was just like, oh, I just gotta get this done. I need water. So, uh, yes, thank you. I do it for you guys. I do it for you guys. I do it for the money. Please join my Patreon. There is a, now unironically, a list of patrons scrolling on the left because it's the end of the video. We've touched down. What a tasteless way of ending the video. Uh, and now the space plane is blocked by, by end cards. Two of them are videos from my channel if you want to click those. If they look interesting, that would be greatly appreciated. You could also subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Patreon button, you can see that. You can also join the channel by clicking the join button below the video. I'm running out of time. If you join, you get a badge next to your name and you get emojis to spam. I've said everything I needed to say. Yes, that's the end. Goodbye.